Greetings from the land of Lithanol. My name is Michael DiNato. I'm going to do another reading today from my second book, pretty much in preparation of my next novel coming out, maybe sometime in August. Um, the new novel coming out is a bunch of short stories, so I'm starting to read bits and pieces of my second book just to get people remembering what happened. And if you haven't read it, by all means, enjoy. Today's reading is going to be um, uh, actually a quite fun one to write. It was between the king and one of the main characters, Ro, who accidentally married his daughter. And this is the first time that he's actually sitting down and meeting the boy. So as any father would know, this is going to be hard. But as a king, when you're responsible for a lot of people and you have to keep your temper in check, it's even harder, especially to remain grounded um, when you have that much power. So without further ado... King's Chamber, Castle Evernight. Ro could hear his parents still arguing outside of the rooms as they walked down the hall, and it worried him more than a little. King Arian had wanted to speak with him alone, and it took everything that he had learned about control to keep from hiding under the bed. Marissa had taken Lys away, damn near kicking and screaming, and now they were alone. Ro's father had protested, but even Tierra had seen that the king and Ro needed to chat. They had all heard about the two kids becoming married, and they needed the facts before the servants spread it to all the other nobles in court. Arian walked in and shut the door behind them. So, young man, do me a favor first before we speak over much. Here, take this. Arian tossed the young man a small bundle of clothes, simple white tunic and breeches, so he could change. We will wash that robe of yours and get you another in a little while. The boy wasn't much to look at, except that hair. It hung down to the boy's lower back and was bone white. Then he saw the boy take off the robe and hesitantly, hesitantly and almost gasped in shock. The robe hid more than anyone would know. The boy had a solid build with a well-muscled frame and he looked like he had spent a good many years training. Not at all what the king had thought when he first saw him. Rose stripped and got dressed in the clothes that the king provided. He hadn't worn anything like this in a very long time and he felt weird. He finished and looked up as the king turned and poured two glasses of something. No, thank you, my lord. I'll have water if it doesn't bother you. Arian laughed and turned with two glasses of water. Don't believe the stories, Rovin. Nobles don't just drink alcohol all the time. He handed Ro the drink and sat in a big comfy chair. As you know, I may be a little concerned about the whole married to my daughter thing, especially since this is the first time we've met. You wouldn't have had any chance to meet me, sir. I'm just a simple warrior from the north. Rose said it before he thought about it. He knew he shouldn't interrupt a king, but he forgot where he was. Then he realized that the big man was laughing. <laughs> oh, Rovin, you remind me so much of your mother. She never let me prattle on either. Ro, the young warrior interjected. Ah, sorry, Ro it is. <clears throat> he cleared his throat, then continued. Now, what can you tell me about your relationship with Alisana? Ro took a deep breath and let it out slowly. How am I going to handle this, he thought. Then he just closed his eyes and started talking. Well, sir, when we met, I had no idea who she was. Once we were both conscious again, I knew her as Lys, and it wasn't until much later that she told me who she really was. He stopped there to gauge the reaction from the stern man and wasn't left waiting. So you had no idea who she was? The princess of your own kingdom? Arian was trying to treat this young man fairly, but his anger was simmering through a little bit. Well, no, sir. I don't think I would have recognized you either if you weren't dressed as a king. You see, up in Dalen, we are simple folk who value hard work and honesty above anything else. While we all know who our king is, we've never seen or actually heard from you. We don't have fancy courts and nobles. No one had talked to him like this since his days with the Companions of Evernight. They never let him forget that they weren't noble, and this young man's candid observation snapped him out of his overprotective father role just as quick. I'm sorry, Ro. You're right. That was wrong of me. Tell me, then, what ceremony was this that you both were included in that you are now married? It hurt to even say it out loud. Nothing against this young man, who, by all respects, was a decent, hard-working young man, but he wasn't prepared for this at all. The fairies called it a revel, and no, I don't remember much of it. I thought you don't drink. Or is this why you don't drink? Arian was still stunned that fairies were real. He never fully believed Carsus about them, and now he would probably have to apologize to him as well. 
No, no, sir, I didn't have any of their drink. It was their food. You see, it's just as intoxicating, apparently, and I was unaware of that. Before you ask, no, we did not do anything untoward with each other. That I am sure of. But if you don't remember, how can you be sure? Arian wasn't angry anymore. Now the story was pulling him in more than anything else. He missed this part of adventure. I wrote a unicorn. Ro whispered so low that it was barely audible. He was embarrassed to say it in front of such an important man, but he felt compelled to be honest. What was that? I didn't hear you. I wrote a unicorn, Ro said a bit louder. Arian was so caught off guard he didn't hear the page announce the seneschal. Oh, well, our... Uh, don't worry, son. That makes me like you even more. He stammered before he regained his composure. He winked at the young man and turned to the door to see Ulthrin walk in. Welcome, Ulthrin. Come, sit and meet Roe, son of Gareth and Tierra Whiteheart. So this is the young man everyone in the castle is talking about. Ulthrin sat down and couldn't help but stare at the young boy. He thought he would be taller and more muscled. He marveled at the boy's hair, though. Something about it was tickling his memories, but he couldn't quite put a finger on it. Roe bowed to the older man and noticed that he walked with a small limp, but it was barely noticeable, not bad for a man of his age. He also saw that the man wore a holy symbol of the goddess Olian, seemingly made of pure silver, denoting that he was a high-ranking cleric of the goddess of beauty and song. Pleasure to meet you, good sir. So what brings you here, Ulthrin? Arian hadn't seen the old man recently, and if he wasn't as busy as he was, he would have been worried. Did I forget to sign something again? The king noticed that Ulthrin couldn't help but stare at the young warrior, something he wanted to do as well, what with all the stories flying about. This boy had done some amazing things, and coming from Carsus, that is no small feat. Well, sire, as you may know, I have been charged with the first ever census of the castle. I have painstakingly complied a list of everyone's name that has stayed here this year, and I am almost finished. Ulthrin took out an ink jar and a quill, he set them on a small table and produced a piece of parchment, unrolling it and holding down the corner with the ink vial. All I am missing at the moment are the newcomers and, of course, the elusive Garces. Don't you already know his name if you just said it? Ro closed his mouth the minute he finished, but it was too late. He didn't know any of the courtly etiquette and was used to just speaking his mind. Why, I guess you are right, but I would also need his last name, and he is quite unreachable for one such as I. Your name would be Rovan Whiteheart? Othrin wrote as the boy nodded. I could always ask Garces if you want. Ro wanted to be helpful, but if that made him look better than the king, then he had to try. Why, that would be a tremendous help to an old man such as myself. Othrin smiled to them. Both then put his tools of the trade away and got up slowly. The king had risen and walked to the window, looking out with a far-off glaze to his eyes. I'll take my leave now, sire. Othrin bowed and left unceremoniously. Roe noticed the king lost in thought and walked over to him by the window. Copper for your thoughts, he said playfully. My daughter is married and I can't find fault with the man she chose. You would think that would be a happy thing, but you have no idea about the courts and treaties we have. He turned and looked at the young man, not a boy at all. Don't worry, though. I won't let anyone come between you two if this is what you both want. They still fear me a little. He smiled, but in the back of his mind, he knew that the nobles would have a hissy fit you could see from the northern belt about the boy not being a commoner. Well, isn't that just too bad? The boy is a legacy from the Companions of Evernight, and that ought to count, he thought. And right then, he knew that he had found his loophole. They couldn't say anything bad about the Companions, so the kid was in. Of course, that wouldn't stop them from trying. Ro couldn't believe that the king was saying this. He was sure the man was going to hate him. Why, thank you, sire. Please. Call me Arian. Sorry, Arian. They both turned towards the door as it opened slowly, creaking as if mice were pushing it open. And we're going to end there. Um, want to know more about the Companions of Evernight and the Land of Lithanol? Uh, my two books, The Darkness Returns and The Darkness Within, are available at Skullgate Media um, and on Amazon, if you wish. In fact, if you go to Amazon and click on my name, you can see a full list of the stories that I have and the books that I'm in. And I thank you for tuning in. And as always, if you like this, hit subscribe and hit that little notification bell. And every single time I put up a video, you'll know. Thank you and have a great day.